Arsenal are very confident indeed that they are leading the race to sign Declan Rice this summer over Chelsea Football Club. They are confident that they are leading. Personal terms are reportedly agreed between the two parties, as we already know, with a deal that could cost somewhere in the region of £80 million. Pounds. Now, this is massive for Arsenal, huge for Arsenal in many, many ways. We're going to delve into that for you, for you 305,000 wondrous people that subscribe to the Football Terrace. But make sure like buttons are being hit. Make sure you're, you're leaving your comments below as well, because I care about the opinions of you. The best football community on social media belongs to me here on the Football Terrace. Also, exclusive content coming from today on TikTok. So make sure you're scanning that QR code or clicking on the link in our description and following us over there. Now, Declan Rice to Arsenal is a massive piece of business. Chelsea are still circling. Chelsea still want him. Chelsea still want to get this deal done. That's an absolute fact. But Arsenal's position in the league is giving them such an advantage in this chase. Their position the togetherness of their squad, the quality of their manager. And I think the fact that Arsenal are now back challenging for Premier League titles. And Declan Rice, he's not an arrogant man, but he's a supremely confident individual. And he knows that him joining Chelsea, him joining Arsenal, him joining Man United, just to name three teams that are looking at him, he improves that team dramatically. Dramatically, in my opinion. Cover it DM box-to-box -box abilities, and his overall skill set will enhance any one of those teams. In fact, he improves every team in the Premier League. Let's not get that twisted. Let's not get it twisted at all. There's no way Arsenal are this flash in the pan team. There is no way Arsenal are going to go back next season to being in a top four race only, not challenging or being dangerous in the cup competitions that they're in. They will invest again this summer. They will spend this summer and improve, in my opinion, their forward line. They'll improve their defense, and they will definitely improve that midfield. Some future planning as well. Improve the overall squad depth by what I call top the top down approach. You add quality players in that are going to be in your first eleven. That naturally, organically, automatically improves the bench. And Arsenal will lead in that race. We know they've agreed personal terms, according to reports earlier this month. Personal terms have been agreed. That doesn't mean the deal's done though. Chelsea are still circulating, and Manchester United are looking at this player as well. According to the Football Insider, Man United are still hopeful of signing Declan Rice in the summer. Rice has expressed a desire to stay in London, but that hasn't put off Manchester United. As a United fan, I would love Declan Rice. There's no doubt about it, I would. However, we have to be really honest with ourselves here. His natural desire has always been to stay in London. Chelsea were the front runners, but Chelsea have fallen off the edge of a cliff. Right now, we have no idea who their manager is going to be, what European competition, if any, they're going to be in. Arsenal, therefore, become the front runners because they are almost back to the absolute peak of their powers. They win the league and they're there. You know, they're back to the highest standard that Arsenal have ever been at. Man United stopping him from joining Arsenal, I think, is a very, very difficult task for United. United have recently introduced an element of a wage cap. I don't think it's quite as basic as the, the what they call the Ronaldo rule, um, because if you look at the the, the 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 deals that some players are existingly on, what Rashford's new deal is going to look like, they're willing to pay more than the two hundred thousand pound a week Declan Rice has been offered by Arsenal. The difference here being, though, signing a new player who's coming in on that money may be problematic. United are trying to keep that wage bill a little lower than they have done in recent years. They believe that the overinflated wage bill playing new players above and beyond what current squad members are earning has been one of the reasons for, for, for the problems in the dressing room. So it remains to be seen whether, whether Man United not can pay, but will pay Declan Rice what Arsenal are willing to do. So for me, Arsenal were leading this race, there's no doubt about it in my mind. Man United are in it, though. Man United are in it. Personal terms, according to reports, have been agreed with Arsenal. That doesn't mean it's done, though, but they are the front runners. In other transfer news related to Arsenal, Graham Bailey here has said that Arsenal are monitoring Raheem Sterling as part of Champions League preparations. Mikel Arteta has enjoyed Jorginho's influence and would like more experience next season to help his young squad. And I read this story and I thought to myself, again, brilliant thinking, brilliant work. 
by Mikel Arteta. And this would also be a disaster for Chelsea. Now, we know when it comes to Raheem Sterling that he, he isn't enjoying life at Chelsea. Nobody is right now. It has not gone the way in which he expected. It completely and utterly hasn't. It's not gone the way he wanted. That's frustrating to him. And we, and we all get that. We all understand it. But why Arsenal? Why is Arsenal the right place for Raheem Sterling? Well, he's moved, he's moved himself down to London for Chelsea, which means he doesn't need to go for a drastic change for his family, for his children, schools, etc. He can stay where he is. Arsenal would be the perfect environment for this guy. I actually think he's better than Martinelli. Not Martinelli's ceiling potentially, but where he is right now, I think Raheem Sterling is better. This season has not demonstrated the quality of Raheem Sterling at Chelsea because Chelsea have been in the pits. Case in point would be Marcus Rashford last year at United when the club fell apart. He was awful. The club gets its structure back, its culture back, its quality back in the team. And Marcus Rashford is one of the most informed attackers in world football. And this is exactly what Raheem Sterling needs. A good culture, a good structure, a solid team, and a very good manager. He would have that at Arsenal. As cover, as somebody to challenge these young players, to keep them honest, this again, just like Declan Rice, would be impeccable business. And when you look at that as some, just, just, just oh, put it as an overview here, January plus the summer for Arsenal. Adding Trossard, adding Jorginho, adding Declan Rice, adding Raheem Sterling. That isn't just quality players. The age profile is mid-20s and above. Premier League proven. Premier League experience. The depth you're adding to your squad is brilliant. I, I don't think people are deep in because these deals are kind of, not sporadic, but the way they're spread out. This is phenomenal business by Arsenal. Some gooners may, they may kind of turn their nose up at this, but I think it is out of this world business. Chelsea have got to do what they can to convince Raheem Sterling to not leave and to stay because I do believe he'll be an asset for them later on down the line. Equally, as a Man United fan, again, it's another deal Arsenal are doing where I think Raheem Sterling, add him to the Man United ranks as, as backup, some of the challenge our players. This could be impeccable business indeed. It really, really could. But I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on it. Smash the like and share button. Up next, we're going to take a look at Arteta responding to Potter's comparisons in the media. Let's go. Make sure you're scanning that QR code, as I say, for our TikTok account, exclusive content on the way. Let's take a little listen here to what Mikel Arteta had to say. You, they, he's under a lot of pressure at the moment. But he said, he used you as an example of giving the manager time. Do you, you empathise and sympathise with, with the situation he's going through at the moment? Absolutely. We are colleagues and, um, and we all know uh, the pressure, the demands and the uncertainty that this industry has. And, uh, and as well, because the fact is at the end that the ball has to go in into that net and there are many factors that sometimes prevent that you cannot control. Uh, so, of course, you empathise and... Um, because you suffer, because you know how it, how it is when, when you are going through those moments. Very kind words there from Mikel Arteta. Didn't clap back, didn't have a pop, but it does state you have to win those games. He goes on to state in a, sta in a sentence here that um, at, the, at the end, though, you have to win football matches because you know that if the run continues, that it's unsustainable. I knew I had to win against Norwich and win against Burnley, and then everything uh, helps and the environment starts to get better. And I think what's very, very important about this statement is two things. One, there is no endless line of support for Graham Potter. It isn't going to happen. At some point, he has got to start winning games. Equally, Gunas will tell you there is no way that Mikel Arteta was ever going to be sacked. This isn't true. Mikel Arteta has confirmed it there. He knew he had to win those two games. Had to win them. Otherwise, his position would have become unsustainable. So, firstly, we can put to bed the bullshit narrative that at no point was he ever under any danger. The same as, you know, Fergie was under danger at Man United, before, you know, back in the, the late 80s, early 90s. He was in danger. These things, I think, if, if he didn't win the FA Cup, didn't go on to win the Cup Winners' Cup. They wouldn't have gone on to win the league. He wouldn't have kept his job. There are always turning points in a manager's career. Games are important. And I think Graham Potter has got to stop focusing on other people now and start to win football matches. But equally, when you compare him to um, Arteta, look at this. 
points per 90 minutes, 28 games of his 26. But Arteta here generating 0.6 more points. 0.7 more goals, almost double. Slightly less goals conceded. Almost double the win percentage. And nearly 20% less defeat percentage. I have said this on a few occasions and I stand by it. Graham Potter is doing himself absolutely no favours when it comes to the situation with his fans with support for him when he compares himself to Arteta because what people will do is go back and look at Arteta's record and say it's considerably better than yours and the man won an FA Cup in his first season. The the Klopp comparisons were ridiculous. He's got to stop. What Graham Potter now needs to do is win football matches. Point blank, period. That is it. Well, I want to take a listen here to Eunice um, and... And Benson, is this a tweet? I, someone sent me a, a, the video, but it was in a tweet saying Chelsea fans are getting desperate. I want to know if you think this is desperation from Chelsea fans or reality. Take a little listen here. My third is Diego Simeone. Yeah, I think it's right. I'm going to put Diego Simeone as third as well. Who Who's your number one? My number one is, out of, out of this list of managers, is Mourinho. This is, as far as I can tell by what I was sent, this is kind of like, who would you bring in to replace him? And they're not the first Chelsea fans I've seen talk about bringing Mourinho back. Diego Simeone is a name as well. Now, Chelsea fans have never really cared about the overall beauty of the football, having the best football in the world. It's just never been something Chelsea fans to me have cared overly about. They'd like it, but if they haven't got it, as long as they're winning and winning trophies, they couldn't care less. Jose's return to Chelsea. Talk to me. I want your opinions on it. Uh, right now, I haven't formulated one myself. And that's where I lean on you, the best football community in the world, to tell me what you think. I want to know. I need to know. I need you to educate me here because I don't know. But you can see the look on Eunice's face. I love Eunice, by the way, one of the best creators out there. He looks excited about the prospect of this. I want your thoughts and I want your feelings. <laughs> Thank you all so much for tuning in. As always, please leave your comments below. Like, subscribe. You must turn on the bell notification as well because YouTube algorithm is not your friend. They will not, sh they very rarely share our videos with you 14% of the time, which means basically just over one in 10 videos you'll get shown. So make sure you've got the bell notifications turned on uh, on the app and make sure your phone has notifications on so you know when we go live or you know when we are producing more content. Hit the like and the share button as I already said, and we'll see you all again very, very soon. Thank you.